law. It's $200 million wasted on Iraqi police training program from July 30th, 2012. The auditors have concluded that more than $200 million was wasted on a program to train Iraqi police that Baghdad says and neither needed nor wanted. And the same things happen with China, too. Uh, China studies U.S. to revamp police force. China is spending more than ever uh, before in an attempt to upgrade its domestic police force, but it may also be seeking to change its approach to law enforcement by looking to the United States for ideas, because we know uh, in America we have a lot of trust of our fraternal order of police. U.S. law enforcement officials and experts who have advised China's police force say Beijing is looking to update an antiquated, antiquated system plagued by outdated crime reporting methods. It says uh, it's more than just hiring somebody off the street and uh, putting a uniform on them. It's a costume. And uh, putting them th turning them loose in a neighborhood and saying, defend the party, right? Well, that's what they do in the U.S., right? Defend your pension. Defend your job. Write those tickets uh, on the 30th of the month defend the fraternal order. That's why most of them don't ever, uh, uh, are, they're never responsible for their actions. SWAT team fires semi-automatic weapons at unarmed teenage girl. Members of a SWAT team opened fire on an unarmed teenage girl this week when police officers outside of Washington, D.C. attempted to serve an early morning search warrant. Pre-dawn raid. Those are nice. 18-year-old is recovering from flesh wounds following Thursday morning's events in District Heights, Maryland. She was asleep in her bedroom at her house when the 15 FBI SWAT agents stormed the house with guns drawn, I'm shouting, nobody is armed, nobody has a gun. And then all of a sudden I heard, she's got a gun. And they just opened fire. Uh, Emery Huffley, Maisha's father, tells local news. So they said that she didn't have a gun, and the authorities allegedly saw something in their minds and had enough reason to unleash a barrage of bullets. Yeah, it's called uh, video games, and tele too much television and too much money thrown at them, and too much um, people telling them. You know, I was thinking about this recently, about wherever they go, the government's in it. It's always about police and fire. you got to have police to enforce the law, and you got to have fire. You know, it's just like, uh, and then we're supposed to, like, you know, suck their schlongs, basically. I don't know a better way to put it. And it's like, well, dude, it's not like we had a choice. We didn't These guys aren't elected, and uh, we have to pay for them. So it's like there's no competition. Why isn't there competing fire fire departments? Why isn't there competing um, uh, police departments, you know, like private ones? Why aren't they accountable for their actions? Philly officer charged for punching woman, Jonathan Hosey, accused of misdemeanor assault. So the Philadelphia police lieutenant who got fired for punching a woman at a festival was charged today with simple assault, a misdemeanor. So pretty interesting, huh? William says police were responding to a chaotic situation, but the use of force was unnecessary. So it's interesting, too, because you think of 9-11 responders, and it's just going back to that, what I was, the point I was trying to make with fire in that firemen, is like, look what happened to those 9-11 responders. They got cancer. Um, they were treated. They were, went through an FBI screening list for terrorists just so they can file for their compensation for going in there heroically and, and doing all that stuff, saving those people and putting their own lives at risk. And they ended up getting shit on by their own government. So, see, that's that's what it, that's why I'm talking about. There's no responsibility for the government to take care of their people that actually go out there and do these things. War in Afghanistan, this is the best example, is the vets, the troops, right? They don't, you know, they don't ask questions. They follow orders. That's what they're supposed to do. You know, and it's up to people in the United States to tell them, you know, Basically, you know, this is wrong. <laughs> War in Afghanistan has failed and is not worth a life, the life of one more soldier, says this uh, Patty Ashdown. It's now crystal clear that we have lost in Afghanistan. I'm not really sure if they lost. Like I said, uh, it's, a, it's, it's a beachhead, right? And um, they got the resources there locked down, the drug trade and all that. It's a good location st strategically for defense against uh, the East, uh, mostly China and Russia. So they haven't exactly lost. But the troops have, and Americans who believe that what they were doing there and the mission being moral, uh, they lost as well. Most deaths are not by the enemy in the front of our troops, but by the enemy among them. Yeah, does, uh, what do they call them, green on blue, whatever. Send street thugs to fight wars. So this is going to be their answer. Uh, it says here, um, a labor MP has blamed nastier violence on the streets on the fact that those who commit such crimes are not being called by being sent to foreign wars. 
he says that the reason for all these people committing these violent crimes is not because of the media. It's not because we live in a demonic, uh, totally engineered society that every day that passes, uh, is the, each little strand of fabric is being unwoven of our, you know, in our society by these engineers. Um, it's not, you know, it's not that. It's that these people aren't being sent off to fight these, uh, these uh, huge um, uh, wars to defend the empire and these petrodollars or whatever it is. I can't believe this. The reality is that we are not calling the young anymore. We are not sending them off to a foreign battlefield to kill other people anymore, and that is why they are on our streets. So, wow. How about good parents and good family uh, structure there, buddy? That's where it all starts. Australia's penal co but That's like I mentioned before. Uh, society as a whole reflects, is a reflection of the family, the individual family unit. And the government is what? Something that impacts society. So society is a reflection of the government. And society is a reflection of the family. And unfortunately, when the government is all up in your family's business, and... Um, they're you know they're 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 basically telling you what to do how to raise your children well this is what you're going to get when they're bypassing all of that you get nothing but pro uh, programming and brainwashing coming mostly through entertainment and uh you know no productivity i mean there's not much to look forward to as far as uh, as the recent future goes i'm optimistic about the long term future but in the in the short term i'm pessimistic because it doesn't look too good if you have your eyes open you know, as far as jobs and that go. So, you know, this guy's talking about uh, sending street thugs to fight wars. And this is from Australia. But it's interesting because, what, Australia is, was originally, what, a penal colony. Yeah, it says here, New South Wales and Australia was founded by the British as a penal colony in 1788. And over the next 80 years, more than 160,000 convicts were transported to Australia from England, Ireland, Scotland, and uh, it also actually, United States, I didn't know this, but there was actually a lot of people that were indentured servants and, and prisoners. And a lot of people don't know that when they talk about the blacks from West Africa being shipped over. There's a lot of whites and Europeans that were slaves and prisoners. U.S. troops anger Okinawa legislators. The Japanese in Okinawa passed a resolution protesting alleged assaults by U.S. troops and calling for reduction of the number of servicemen and bases on the island. I don't know how much is going to happen. Um, because they're going to have a presence there. The U.S. has to have a presence in Japan uh, because the Japanese people, I, I think just deep down, they don't hate us. They just despise us being over there, uh, basically de dominating them, you know, because we won the war and stuff like that. And our cultures are just totally uh, um, dissimilar. They're unlike each other. So they can't wait for us to get out of there. But unfortunately, I think the Rothschilds have a big wedge in there in Japan. That's That's the weirdness about it. They're staunchly anti-West, and uh, yet the Rothschilds uh, have their, their tentacles sunk into Japan. But I think the, the families and the mafias out in Japan have at least enough control to be able to maintain their culture, which is a threat, I think, to the West and them. United Airlines sued for leaving paralyzed Marine vet soaked in urine. Disabled uh, vet was pushed from his wheelchair and soaked in his own urine after U United Airlines employee refused to help the man to his seat on the plane. The retired Marine had filed a lawsuit. So, yeah, they just cared about rules and orders and barking orders on them planes, the stewardess. Army suicides for 2012 surpassed last year's numbers. Ten months into 2012, the number of suspected suicides by active duty soldiers has surpassed last year's total, even as the Pentagon struggles to stem the persistent problem. So, like I said before, right? It stems from society. What's the mission? Is it a moral mission? You know? Um, so they're looking to uh, nasal sprays to, you know, for depression. You're going to spray a little nasal spray in your nose, almost like an asthma, as a, a person with asthma does to curb depression. Also, they have suicide prevention, a really big program now. Like I said, what happened? Uh, one of the guys that was had no problems, an army sergeant, um, basically killed himself he was actually playing the role of a concerned friend after that went into his truck and killed himself so again this is mind control this is what they do they unleash they they plant the seeds of programming and then later um you know it actually works it works the opposite of what they say they're going to do you know that's why it's kind of part of that definition of mind control hey at least that uh, uh, uh turd bag in, in australia the congressman whatever 
uh, maybe he'd be happy because this is you know this is part of the calling, right? But yeah, they'll they'll make a big uh, a big political melee about how to help these troops when all they can do is just uh, look at what the hell they're doing, having them do right. Because most of these politicians are cowards um, and stuff like that. They're not going to actually go and do anything themselves. Vets killed in train crash push wives to safety. Four servicemen were killed in a Texas accident. So it's uh, pretty crazy down in Texas. They were actually having um, like a veterans parade or something like that. And uh, it goes on there and says they pushed their wives to safety while unable to escape themselves as the train bore down on a parade float at a crossing. It goes on and says six, uh, 16 other people were injured in the crash. One's in critical condition. The authorities say the crossing gate lights appeared to be working. It says the float was behind another truck at the crossing and couldn't move out of the way. So I've mentioned this before, how I don't like trains. I, I kind of despise them. I mean, I know they're good for transporting goods and all that around. That's great. But uh, they're so invasive and they, they're just like everything else with all the complexes, whether it's health complex, the dairy complex, the beef complex, you know, the, it's, it's very dictatorial. It's, it's almost like it, it's basically a, an extension of the government itself. They just, you know, they just sit there. They take up your time. I've already gone through all this. You have to sit there and wait on them. And uh, they're making profits, and they're just making you sit there while you're coming back from work, going to work, trying, you're on your own time, you're off time, and they're consuming your time, which is the most invaluable source of life in life, right, is your time. And they sit there, and they just they detain you, basically. And you can't do anything about it. You don't get any compensation from them. And, of course, they can beep their horns. I think there's something very... A satanic about those damn horns they're so loud when they come through and they always come through in the middle of the night blaring their horns everybody knows that they're there you know whatever so if it's lights or something like that you know they don't need to be blaring their horns like that coming through disrupting the peace but they do this that's that's like the military with their bombs shaped like phalluses like george carlin was saying you know you know that's telling that's telling you and the whole town i'm coming through i got a big horn and a big train you better get